what we're trying to do is put the line directly opposite the target and directly back to the target. Now, what is what happens is that all strokes are the same, except when you hit a golf ball, when you hit a baseball, when you throw a frisbee, when you throw a spear, those things left and went off by themselves. But your fly line goes in a loop, and the bottom of the loop here is attached to your rod, so this is going to affect what happens to your cast. So, if I make a cast and immediately follow through, I've destroyed my own loop. You follow me? Now, this will go best because it's a nice tight loop. And I have no trouble throwing this in a lot more line if I wanted to. Now I'm going to make a bigger loop and it won't go halfway across. This sounds technical, but it's going to make sense in a minute. Big loop. Bigger loop. not going. The reason the larger loop doesn't go anywhere is two th three things. One, you're throwing your energy around a curve. Two, you're entering more line against the air. And three, something has to hold it up. This line unrolls. If, if I lock this line around here and I false cast, this is like a tank track. What's under a tank ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> That's not moving. What's moving is the curvature of the track unrolling toward the, the target or away from it. Once the tank track breaks, the tank stops. Once this line opens up, the loop on loop is gone. No matter how far you throw it, when that loop opens up, it's going to fall. So what we're trying to do most of the time is throw a smaller loop that's efficient and we need to throw it straight behind us. There are four principles that control all your casts. And you cast a plug rod, a spinner rod, and a fly rod the same way. The stroke is exactly the same. The only difference is on a spinning rod or a plug rod, some weight's attached that takes it out. This unrolls. So, the first principle of fly casting a spinning or a plug rod or a spinning rod is you've got to get the lure or the weight or the end of that line moving. God will not let you make a cast until you get the end of your fly line moving. So I got slack in here and I cast. Nothing happens. Once you get the end of the line moving, and as long as you keep it moving, you can make a cast anytime you want. I'll make one now. As long as I have the end of this line moving, I can cast anywhere I want. I'll cast over to him, I'll cast under here, I'll cast under there, I'll cast <laughs> over here. So, but God will not let you make a cast till you get the end of your line moving. There's only four principles and they're all simple. The second one talks about the stroke. All strokes are the same. They got a couple variables. The stroke is either short or it's long. It starts slow or it starts fast and it simply goes faster and faster and faster and faster and stops in the direction you want it to go. If you want to hit a baseball and you want to hit a home run, start with the bat back here, pivot the body and you accelerate, start as fast as you possibly can on a long stroke with the baseball bat, stop smoothly going up. There is no parts to casting. There ain't no power stroke in casting. If you try to power stroke, you can see the difference. A stroke is simply, I'll lay it on the grass to show you. A stroke simply starts slow or fast, short or long, and just goes faster, faster, smoothly to a stop. So if I wanted to make a short cast, I would start here, pivot my body a little bit. I'm gonna go faster and faster and faster. I want it to go up. I stop going up, there's no shot. Now I want to make a longer cast. I put the rod back further, I pivot more, I'm going to start faster, smoothly go faster and faster to a smooth stop. There's all the line. Now I'm going to make the power stroke that everybody tells you to make. That's when you get wind knots, when there ain't no wind and all kinds of problems in your cast. 
the smoother everyone, the smoother you can make your stroke go faster and faster and faster to a stop, the smoother you can do that, the smoother the cast is. A false cast too with just a good stroke. No shock waves, nice tight loops. Now I'm going to get power stroke. Don't put any things in here but just to smooth faster, faster, faster. And it works. It works on a roll cast. Same thing. You start back here, you smoothly go forward. Call on the grass. And you make a stroke. So all your strokes, sideways, vertical, angle. The last thing is the longer you move this rod through the air, not the line don't go as fast, it does go a little faster. But what you really do is you bend this rod and you store energy down here. So if I put this rod on the grass behind me, don't have a lot of room here, but, but see the rod tip is down low. If, when this tip starts moving, <coughs> as soon as that line starts to move, it's bending the rod. Here's one finger. That was the fly line. If I throw it back again and just move it like that, it don't go nice, but it's throwing all the line. Now, if we make that line travel in a straight line and take the rod back to the father, look how effortly the cast is. This is where the cast is going to end up. Smooth. Stop. So it's the smoother you do this. Okay. Now, why, how can we make it? We're almost finished with all this crap. How can you make sure that you're making that line go straight and back and forth the way you want to go? One of them is what you do with your thumb. Your thumb should start, let's say we're that tall guy over there. I want to cast at him with a vertical cast. I will not start that vertical cast until this thumb is behind the rod handle from that target. It's not over here, it's not over here. So I start. If I wanted to make a side cast, my thumb is still behind the target. If I make it down here, if I make a side cast here and I come around and have to make a vertical cast, I don't make it until I realign that thumb behind the court. What this ensures is that all the line is gonna go straight back and forth. This is side cast, this is angled cast, this is vertical cast, and this is even tilting on one, and it all goes straight. So you want to start with there. The next thing is, think that your elbow is on a shelf, and you can go up on the shelf straight, but you never raise that elbow to leave the shelf. This is my rod tip. If my elbow is going straight back and forth here, my tip is taking the line straight back and forth from the target. The moment I move this elbow off the shelf or raise my elbow, I'm taking line and wasting it throwing around curves. You're also, like particularly girls, you might tear a rotator cuff because every time you go up and down, that's, that's going to hurt, and you're going to take tennis elbow. If you now bend your wrist, look what happens to your loops. Every time you bend your wrist, you're throwing line around a curve. Don't bend the wrist. All the energy goes straight back and forth. Now you bend your wrist, or if you twist your wrist, you keep the wrist immobile. <laughs> All the energy went straight away from the target. I keep the, I don't bend the wrist, I keep the elbow on the shelf, and I keep the thumb behind the cork from the target. All the line went straight away. The moment you bend the wrist, Raise the elbow or twist it, you're starting to waste your energy on the cast. Okay, um, let, any questions so far? Good, you know this. <laughs> um, get up here, it's your rod. Here, what's the hand? Okay, and if you all came here for sympathy, you ain't going to get it. <laughs> now get closer to it. Okay, now, make a cast. Make another one. Any kind? Yeah. This is what we're waiting on. <laughs> this is how we're ready when we're, when we're ready. Okay, Kimberly ain't to doing the damn thing I told her to do. <laughs> she bent her wrist, she raised her elbow, and she flopped the line. 
Look, this is windshield wiper. <laughs> Your wipe windshield stays in one spot on the bottom. That means the windshield is throwing the energy around the curve. Now, put this uh, right foot back. Now, remember, we're going to use the body. <coughs> difference in the cat immediately? Now, if Tim wanted to make a longer cast, her foot's here. If, if she wanted to make a long, you don't cast any harder at 20 feet than you do at 50 feet. You just start faster over a longer foot. You start faster over a longer thing that bends the rod more. I don't cast any harder at 50 feet than I do at 20. I just make a longer stroke and start faster on the stroke. And as I go faster and faster and faster, I'm bending and bending and bending more of the rod. My rod does the work. Most people do the work. So what we would do is put, your, put this foot back a little bit more. Now, see, Kim would, went to here. See how far the rod is? See how far the rod in went now? With her foot back here, now, remember she was here. She's now bending this rod from here all the way to here. And just let me have the line itself on. Give me just a little bit more hand. Slide that shit. Now, you get, let that one Now, look how easy it is. Now, pivot the body. See it? No, you're tapping the damn line. Don't you tap it again. I'm not passing any harder. Okay. <laughs> Only when you're up here and I hold your hand do you realize I'm not pounding on this rod. All you're doing is just, if you want the line to go further, all you do is start a longer cast and start faster over that long cast. Do you know how to double hand? 